From the beginning of the time, humanity had this deep desire of being stronger. They've tried different ways. If you look at different civilizations, they have one thing in common. All civilizations, if you look in the path, Greek, Egyptian, Romans, Persians, Chinese, Indians, they have heroes in their histories. And they repeatedly talk about that, talked about these heroes, so it looks like it was actual history. Even the modern uh, TV shows and the movies, if you look at the Hollywood, they're there are a lot of uh, these super superhumans. These are the Superman, Batman, Sandman, Spider-Man. What they have, what they all have in common, is they are stronger than regular people mentally or physically. So um, my story starts from 2011 at University of Louisville. I wasn't there, but uh, Susan Harkema's team they had one person, one individual, who had a spinal cord injury, spinal cord completely severed. He couldn't move lower extremities at all. After receiving the intervention, he could start moving his legs voluntarily. So paralyzed completely, then intervention, now voluntary movement. He can't walk, but he has this movement. He can stand up. Pretty big deal. Then in 2014, the same story continues. At May 2014, same teams add three more people to the same study. Now we have four people who had spinal cord injury, spinal cord severed, paralyzed. Now after intervention, which I will talk about what kind of intervention, they start being able to move their legs, which was significant in that time, because before this time, we thought CNS injuries is end of time. Um, so this intervention was this little small lead on the back of a spinal cord. Small stimulators sending impulses, electrical impulses. This was something new. The technique has been used for pain and different purposes, but not for motor movement. The small stimulator after a an, an minimally invasive surgery could be implanted on the back of a spinal cord, which can over time generate different, different kind of stimulations, which can cause improvement in motor function. So this gave us this idea. Um, is it possible to do it on more patients? Maybe if there are 20 people, they might even improve more, or it can't be, maybe, maybe it's not even possible on other people, because four, four, four people is not enough to decide and generalize for the entire society. So we thought about an alternative method which doesn't need a surgery. Transcutaneous stimulation came to the game. So there was a method called transcutaneous spinal cord stimulation, a small patch, small electrodes put on the same area but over the skin. And the patients were located on their side and their legs are kind of hanging from the ceiling so they could freely move their legs. We asked them to move their legs without stimulation at the beginning, of course no movement because we chose the spinal cord injured patients who couldn't move their legs. After applying the stimulation over time and practicing over time, same people could generate a lot of movement. And this, this was kind of a new thing for us. We'll, I'll explain why. The same paper was published in Journal of Neurotrauma at 2015. And if you look at the improvement pre-training, it's almost no movement. And post-training, we have that change, and that's the angle of a joint. Which, which, which is the actual functionality of, of a muscle. So the patients were mo moving, uh, improving 200 minimum, 900% maximum in a force. 900% in a force. So that was, that was something that happened over four, five weeks. We didn't continue the study because what well, you decide, you just give a time limit, we can't say the study will continue forever, and this, the time limit was four weeks. So we were thinking, is the lower extremity the only organ in the body can improve in this fashion? Maybe heart can improve too. Upper extremity hands, we don't know. So one step backwards and we change the topic. We change the upper extremity. In the new study, we implanted cervical spinal cord, again below the level of injury. Now our patients, they were paralyzed in upper and lower extremity. Cervical spinal cord innervating upper extremity. 
You see all those small implants? And we started having the patients, we started asking them to do the hand grip. So this is, this is what we are, we are measuring now, the grip force. That device, different springs, and we measure the force. The patients would come here 12 weeks, first week, they just practice, practice, practice. So if they can improve on their own, they will show in the improvement at the beginning of the study. And then they go and do the surgery. The small surgery, small lead, it starts the stimulation, and you see the improvement. And weekly, we have kind of almost doubling the force of these patients. In this study, we have minimum of 183%, 183%, and maximum of 350% improvement. Now, we were thinking about what's the mechanism. Can we apply this on everything else? The mechanism which we are thinking right now, the hypotheses, which is not proved yet, but that's an interesting hypothesis, is not what everyone thinks. Everyone thinks first time when you're looking at these re results, okay, they are regaining function. So first thing you would do, you're comparing these patients to their own prior to their study, or their own prior to the injury. When you're, there can be, you're comparing them, it's like, okay, the, he can generate 40 newtons with the hand, he used to be able to do 400. Not quite there yet. But what we are thinking, this is not re-enabling of the same thing, it's not re regaining the same function. This is a new function. In the spinal cord, there are a lot of pathways in entire CNS, which are standing there doing nothing. But now with the stimulation, we are teaching the spinal cord to learn to reactivate the same pathways to do something new. So that's the hypothesis. This is something new we are giving to the patients who are paralyzed at the moment. This can apply on anyone. This can apply on any of us in the room. Our CNS, in general, has a lot of neurons. They're just standing there watching each other. And that's the reality. How we can teach them? Can we even teach them? We never knew we can teach them. But now we learn that this is a new method of teaching the central nervous system. What was the old method? We know we all can learn by looking, by watching, by listening, by touching. We never knew there's, a, there's something other than our own perception. And this is the when the stimulation comes to the game. It can, it can go more forward, just imagine the, the possibilities. Okay, um, now where we are, that's where we are. We don't know where we are going. We don't know if the same method that we are uh, trying to apply on every single organ in the body is going to happen in the future. We have hypotheses, we have goals. Not quite there yet, okay? But I always try to look at it like this. The CNS system, the central nervous system, we are not using even 5% of it. And we all know, we are a species which needs to survive on Earth or outer space or anywhere. And maybe this 5% of the brain is not enough. Maybe we found a new way to improve even more, to help each other even more. So um, I hope for the, for the studies, for these kinds of studies, as well as others, of course, to, to improve in the future and give us something new. And uh, I wish you the best. Thank you.